So now uh, let's talk about your rights as a consumer in Nigeria. We know that uh, in conformity with plans to restructure and reposition critical agencies in the country, the president, President Bola Tinubu, recently replaced the leadership of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection uh, Commission. And now we have uh, at the end of affairs, Dr. Adamu Ahmed Abdullahi. He's the acting executive vice chairman of Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Good morning, Dr. Abdullahi. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning, Ini. It's my pleasure being here. Great. So um, I, I guess the first place to start would be what, do you, what are you uh, bringing? What's different from what the former administration was doing or enhanced plans, I may say? Really, we cannot be doing anything differently. The act that establishes the FCCPC is very clear on our mandate, which is the protection of the interest of both consumer and service provider. So what we do is to more or less protect the interests of the consumer and we just continue in line with what the former EVC has been doing, but we just have to do it uh, even to a larger scale. Have you heard of saying, soldier come, soldier go, barrack remain? So we will continue our work to the best of our ability. The FCCPA of 2018 has clearly mandated the FCCPC to be the apex regulatory body in as much as uh, competition and consumer protection is involved in this country. And uh, that is what we continue doing to the best of our ability. Mm. It doesn't matter who is at the helm of affairs. We are trying to build institutions, not individuals. And as the uh, former UVC said or tweeted in his account the day of his removal, he has left soldiers behind and we are the full soldiers that will continue the work. We give all assurance to all Nigerians that nothing has changed. We we'll continue working to the best of ability. We we'll have the capacity and we we'll have the will. Mm. So um, uh, just as you referred to him, Mr. Rukera there, we know that he was very passionate about uh, the loan apps and he had a plan for the loan apps. Uh, uh, for instance, wanted to create a new regulatory framework. Uh, since you're continuing in that, could you let mm -hmm. us in on this new framework for the loan apps? I've been heading the uh, operations as executive commissioner operations all the while under uh, Urukera's leadership. So therefore, all the investigations regard the loan apps and all the developments of the uh, regulations were done with me as part of the team. So therefore, nothing stops our continuity in that respect. We'll continue in that line. We'll develop the additional regulatory requirement that are needed. What we want to do is to ensure that the interest of the consumer is protected. You see, we're working on this project along with the CBN, which is the core competence in finance in Nigeria. Of course, the Data Protection Commission is also there, Human Rights Commission, EFCC, ICPC. You see, uh, in developing these regulations, we carry these other regulators also along, and we did what we were supposed to do and came up with these interim regulations that now we know where these loan apps operate from. Formerly, they are, they are of no fixed address really, and uh, when they do what they used to do, there was no way you can put names to places or catch whoever it is that is responsible. It took us a long time before we could even identify where it was they were operating from. Before we did that, in, uh, found that, that most of them were in, maybe in Lagos. I was part of that raid. We went in the dawn raid and found out what it was that they were really doing and really brought them to book in that this data protection issue is of immense importance. We have to protect the data of our, in our people in Nigeria. What they used to do is immediately you get a loan from them, they have access to your, to, to your, to, to your phone numbers. So they can now go ahead and harass your family, your employer, and things like that. People lost their jobs. People lost their families. In fact, people even lost their lives. We don't want that kind of harassment. What we want is to have a safe place where they can operate. In the sense that from the days of COVID, we have found out that these loan outs play a very vital role in the financing 
of individuals and small scale industries. So therefore, they play a vital role. There is no way we can stop them from what they are doing because they are stopping, they are filling in a gap that exists in the system. So, but then they have to do it also taking into cognizance the fact that they have to protect the interests of, our, of the people whom they give loans to. That is all we're trying to ensure. Of course, they keep coming up with new uh, ways and means. So we have to now look at these things and as they develop, we also have to be a step ahead of them. And that's what we try to do. And that's how we have to look at these regulations that we already have and make them even more consistent with the current realities. And that is what we're working on at the moment. Mm. Uh, yes, as you said, mm. about 20 aircraft started and we continue in that direction. Yeah, so I, I know that one struggle has been finding a balance because, as you noted, these loan apps, they do fill a vacuum, you know, in, in the economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, space. Uh, but you also have the yeah. disadvantages. So now, how do you balance the rights of the consumer, who is supposed to be a customer, but in some cases have refused to pay back or are un unable to pay back, you know, so that's a customer not, mm. li not living up to the, the expectation, but also still protecting their rights, which is where the loan apps themselves come from. So how do you find a fine balance between the rights of these two uh, parties? It's a delicate balance. And uh, as you have also noticed, this role that they play is of immense importance to the economy. So therefore, what we do is we don't give ourselves the uh, wisdom. We know that we don't know it all. That is why CBN is on that team. That's why the Data Protection Board is on the commission is on that team. And that's why we have Human Rights Commission. So therefore, we put us together and find solutions. Yes, they give loans. Yes, they must collect their loans back, but also not, not go ahead and uh, destroy families and lives in the process of collecting back their loans. So that is what this, uh, all these regulations that we're coming up with try to balance, and that is what we'll continue to do. All right, recently you launched the Don't Burn Their Future campaign, and uh, I, I remember mm. I went through that report when you came to Lagos and all of that, and you also have the need to balance, uh, there's, well, there's an advisory that, you know, individuals under the mm -hmm. age of 18 shouldn't smoke. Smoking is bad for your health. But, I mean, you also have customers of cigarettes and all of that whose rights they, you are also protecting. So um, how do you hope to balance that in the face of your campaign of don't burn your, their future campaign? That's the essence of that campaign. You see, the figures are just so disheartening. If over 4.5 million Nigerians, as of now, smoke, and over 3 million of those, of those now smoke what they call smokeless cigarettes, and uh, we found out that uh, these are not any more healthier than the, the, cigarette, the normal cigarettes that people have consumed over the years. And plus the fact that we are losing so much in that the younger generation are getting into this bad habit. And before you know it, uh, it, it gets better when you start at, at, a late, at a late age. But when you start early, when people start smoking early, it gets to their health much earlier in life. Government is spending so much on health care to make sure that uh, these people are healthy. The economy is suffering because when they are not well, they cannot go to work. And we have to really come in and do something about it. Despite the fact that, yes, uh, tobacco is a big industry and it uh, contributes to the economy of the country, but also this harm that it does to the health of the public is of immense uh, concern to us. And that is why we came up with this campaign that says don't burn their future. That means don't sell cigarette or cigarette products to the younger age. Don't smoke uh, in their presence. Don't send them to buy cigarettes for you uh, as a parent or as a guardian or as an elder. So essentially, the campaign will be geared towards all sectors of society, the youth themselves, the parents, the guardians, but more especially the retailers. These are the people that sell the cigarettes. 
so they would know that it is uh, unlawful for them to sell cigarettes to the youth and then they reached. And uh, as you said earlier, this is a campaign that has been ongoing for so long, but we want to add a lot of spice to it now. There is a 13 episode uh, film that will start playing on, uh, on uh, your channels very soon. And uh, I mean TV channels very soon, and radio of course, and then we we'll also have adverts in that direction that would now inform youth and the general public of the dangers inherent in, some, in tobacco smoking. So therefore, this is a campaign that will last for about two years from now, and we believe that by the time it is over, since we are going to keep monitoring and evaluating as we get along, we would see the effect that we're going to have on the general public. What we intend to do is to hold town hall meetings where we bring in the youth, the parents, the guardians, the retailers themselves together. And we are doing this along with the tobacco manufacturers because this is, there's no, we, are, we are not doing anything that is against them. What we are trying to do is to save the future of our children, which is a given in any society. By the time you have any sort of malaise that attracts the youth and uh, touches their health is something that is of immense worry to the authorities. And of course, we are the protectors of the consumers are at the forefront of that worry. The Ministry of Health has come in, as you have noticed at that launching, very strongly in support of us, because as from 2015, not just 2005, there has always been a national anti-tobacco uh, act anyway. That is what really banned smoking in public places, in confined places, and things like that. And I think that's something that we have been has been adhered to strictly in this country. But then this issue of selling tobacco to the youth and the underage has been of concern to us. And we have also come up with a telephone phone in that people can now call in when they have issues of cigarette smoking and talk to experts. That's how the civil, civil, civil uh, society organizations have come into the CSOs. And since they have the knowledge of what actually this tobacco smoking does to people, they can now counsel people that have not been, want to, want to stop smoking but have not been able to do so. So essentially, that's the crux of the matter and that's what we intend to do in this campaign. Mm, and I think you also capture um, those who are not smokers, but you know, have to endure, you know, if you're in a space of uh, smokers and yet you're a non-smoker. What we call second smoking, that is. Exactly, mm. so people who are exposed to it. Yeah, sure. Those are second smokers, and that's what we intend to do also. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Acting Executive Vice Chairman of Federal Com Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, that's the FCCPC, Dr. Adamu Ahmed Abdullahi. Thank you for your time this morning. I wish you the best in your campaign. Thank you very much, Eni. I appreciate this. Thank you.